Hey, this is Ellie Fishman. I'm live from Lily's office because the computer in my office, the passwords for the YouTube changed and the YouTube and uh, whatever did not work. But anyway, I'm here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to be here. Um, and we're talking about Facebook Live. We're talking about the fact that I can hear myself on an echo here. <laughs> but uh, be that as it may, hopefully you're not hearing the echo. Um, I just want to... Um, uh, first of all, congratulate, um, I guess it's a sad, but it's congratulations. Linda Carter, her husband passed away about a year ago from uh, blood, you know, from a leukemia type process related to myelofibrosis. And there's an announcement today that she donated a lot of money to help research City of Hope in California. Hopefully, um, we can find the cure for that terrible disease. So we congratulate her and her family for uh, doing that. Um, so that's really nice. Um, this talk is on protocols, and I always talk about protocols. Um, we always would bring this up. One of the biggest things CTSS started with was protocols, and we keep always fixing our protocols, adjusting them. If you go to the website, you can see the adjustments, and you can see everything. But the point I want to bring up today is it's been a tough two and a half, three years, the COVID era. We're still not out of COVID. We're not going to be out of it. I don't know when. But one of the things that COVID brought and then the contrast shortages brought that we tried to minimize things. We put a lot of effort in minimizing how we do things, but that was the right thing to do. There's no doubt you had to try to get by, but you know, remember people, you had to wear a mask. You couldn't take the mask off. You couldn't give oral contrast. You don't, you don't want to give up. You're afraid of giving IV. Everything kind of just happened. Very sick patients, all of the challenges we went through staff shortages in the tech side, the doc side, on and on and on. And I don't need to tell you about that. You know about it as well or better than I do. But today, we're not out of COVID, but we need to get back to basics. Basics in CT, to me, to me always are the protocols. And the important part of the protocol is IV and oral contrast. When you look at your accuracy, the better your protocols, the more accurate you're going to be. If you don't give arterial phase imaging, you're gonna miss all the neuroendocrine tumors. You're gonna miss the vascular malformations. If you don't do delayed phase imaging, you're gonna miss the TCCs and the subtle renal cells and small pancreatic cancers and small liver mets. The patient has colon cancer. And if you don't give IV contrast and do arterial phase, you're gonna miss neuroendocrine tumors or carcinoid tumors as they metastasize to the liver, give small mets to the vascular. We can go on and on. If you don't have a good injection, you're not gonna pick up a PE. If the patient's breathing during the study, you're gonna miss or overcall the section of the aortic root and call type A when it's not there or miss it when it is there. On and on the mistakes that are made because of bad protocols or less than a quality study. So in September, 2022, which is where we are now, we need to really dedicate ourselves to going forward by taking a step backwards. Relook at your protocols and your protocols may be correct. Don't get me wrong. The question is, are people following the protocols? Are people giving oral contrast, whether it's positive or neutral, depending on the situation? Are they giving enough of that? I think you're going to find it in the ER setting, but even in the hospital setting. People are not giving oral contrast. They're not giving enough of it. They're not giving it well-timed. What about IV contrast? Are you doing way too many non-contrast scans because that's what you were doing? But things like dissections or acute abdomens because it was good enough? Well, good enough is, by definition, not good enough. When do you need contrast? Make sure you're giving contrast when you need it, always. To me, most of the time, you need contrast. And when you're doing it, what are you doing? Are you doing single phase or dual phase? Are you doing everything single phase at 70 or 80 seconds because that's what you've been doing to cut back on things? Well, no, you need to do dual phase for many things. Multi-phase for kidney, multi-phase for pancreas, multi-phase for liver. Are you doing the runoff studies correctly? Are you going back on older patients and rescanning from the knee down to make sure that patients with slow flow, you're not calling it a occlusion? Are you going back and doing the studies correctly so that you can do 3D imaging by using the right slice thickness and intervals? Or are you just doing everything by threes or fives and just saying, hey, one run, there's less images. We don't got to tie up the network. What exactly are you doing? I think one of the challenges in the COVID era 
so many people doing teleradiology. They're all home. Nobody wants to come to work anymore. I feel like I'm Tim Cook at Apple or the people at Google or the people at Facebook or the people at every single company. People want to be home. Now, there's some things you can do from home, but you're not really talking to the text from home. Yes, yeah, so I can call them on the phone. But even if you're here, you're not here the same way you were. You're not having coffee. You're not hanging out. You're not eating donuts, bagels, cookies, ice cream, pizza, or any of those things which you would eat together. Now you're wearing masks and you're separated and you're far apart and there's minimal communications. We're all guilty of that. There's no doubt about it. That's just the way things have evolved. Well, I'm telling you, before things evolve even more, we got to go back. This, when we talk about the uh, people leaving work, I forgot what the, how the term they use for it, but uh, the great something or other, the great turnover, I don't know, whatever. What's that? The great resignation. There's also, that was Lily helping me out there, but that wasn't the word I wanted. It's the great something, or people are just, I don't know, leaving or whatever they're doing. I'm talking about the reverse. We have to have a great redo. That's the word I was thinking, maybe, a redo. We have to go back to where we were, how we were doing things to make sure we're doing things well. We're not going to meetings. I ran four meetings a year for 35 years just because of the course and everything else. I'm not sure I'm running a meeting ever again. I'm speaking at some great meetings. I'll be in Las Vegas with ESI. I'll be with um, National Comprehensive, uh, the group uh, in Orlando in, in December. There are meetings going on, and I know people are wanting to go to meetings, but you haven't been to meetings, so you've not been thinking, you've not been talking. The Zoom things are great, but Zooms, you're looking at your phone, you know, you're, you're, giving a, you're listening to a Zoom talk, and you're checking the stock market. You're checking who sent you a totally unimportant email. <clears throat> you're looking at all sorts of things. I don't know. Anything on here worthwhile? My grandchildren, okay. I got some good pictures. I can look at that. But your attention span is like at 20%. You're not really listening. So what I'm saying to you and what I'm saying to myself and I'm saying to everybody out there on YouTube land, 38,000 of you who are subscribed to YouTube, the 243,000 people who are on our Facebook page, the half a million people who are on our CTS Us website, our 138,000 people on Instagram, what is it, 15,000 on Twitter, 18,000 on Twitter, and all the other people I know, you know, that's another five or six people. Uh, I feel like Larry David here. But the point is, and I'm being very serious on this, we need to really look at what we're doing, go back, think of what you are doing and what you're not doing. We're not blaming anybody. This is not a blame game. We're just saying we need to take a step back, think of how we did things correctly, and move forward from there. There's no blame. There's no shame. But we need to move forward before moving backwards or doing things poorly becomes the new standard. We don't want new standards. You know, when you start doing things for three years, that becomes a new norm. Doing a bad study may be the new norm. You don't want that. Okay. So with that, I'll stop there. Um, I will give us a plug. You know, we have a speaker series starting November, September 29th. Norm Bochamp, going back to Norm. Norm Bochamp, who's from Michigan State. Norm was at Hopkins, Seattle. Norm's running and revitalizing Michigan State. He's not responsible for the football or basketball team. So he probably will take responsibility this week because Michigan State won. And I guess they probably have a good team as always. And we'll see how good they do against Michigan. But nevertheless, Norm is going to be here. A very exciting talk. So that should be just wonderful. And we have a bunch of other wonderful speakers that should follow uh, once a month. So anyway, with that, I'll stop there. Take a look at our protocols. Take a look at our cases. We got the stuff. We got the images. We got the info. Now we got your attention. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.